What do you enjoy most about being a veterinarian? So it has been challenging over COVID because most veterinary hospitals went curbside and, um, but I would say before COVID and, and partially still, the thing I like most, particularly about surgery, because I only do surgery, is that it is creative. It's creative. It makes you, you have to be able to think on your toes. Um, you're constantly learning. So don't become a vet or a doctor if you don't want to keep learning because you will learn something new every day and you have to keep up with your knowledge in order to remain, um, you know, cutting edge and do the right things for your patients. Um, so I would say creativity and learning every day um, and having sort of intellectual stimulus every day is the thing I like the most. I, I mean, I do like working with the dogs too. Most of the time when I see them now, they're already asleep under anesthesia. So <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you kind of started going into this with, you know, saying that COVID is a challenge because I was going to also say the flip side of that, you know, what are the challenges? I guess outside of COVID are the other challenging things? I think the challenge, honestly, in veterinary medicine is financial. So students are coming out of that school with an extremely high debt load. I mean, we're talking two hundred fifty dollars to $300,000 of debt. Um, and the debt to income ratio in veterinary medicine is very wide. So whereas in human medicine, you might come out with a high amount of debt, the income that you generate once you graduate is significantly higher. Whereas in veterinary medicine, I mean, general practice vets, their, their, gen, their income is not, not huge. And I think that's especially challenging in New York because the cost of living is so high in New York. Um, so I think that's a huge, I, I worked the previous practice I worked in for five years, we had an internship program. So I worked with veterinarians who had just graduated vet school and they were coming in for an additional year of training and they had tremendous debt loads. And I went to vet school close to 20 years ago and mine was a third of what they had. So I have been lucky enough to already pay off my debts. Um, but in addition to that, I'm also a specialist. So you generate more of an income if you specialize. Okay. Um, so I think that's honestly the biggest challenge. If you look at all on Facebook or any veterinary groups, there's unfortunately a high, high suicide rate with veterinary medicine. They think that the financial aspect and the emotional aspect um, of the job is, is part of the root cause of that. Um, I think also the lack of health insurance. So in human medicine, you have the benefit of patients coming in that have financial backing for their care. And in veterinary medicine, we don't. Um, and it is not uncommon if a dog breaks its leg and needs me to put a plate and screws in it, that's a $6,000 surgery easily. Um, and a lot of people just don't have the means to do that. And it becomes, you know, emotionally challenging for the veterinarian who can't provide the care that they want to care without, without, with being able to maintain a business and an income with, with also, you know, feeling bad that the client can't get the care for their pet. Um, and there's a lot of, I would say at my previous job at the brick and mortar practice, I would say 75% of my job was spent talking about finances, um, and the ability of, um, an owner to be able to pay for the, for the care that was provided to their pet, literally. Um, so I think those are the big challenges. Make sure to check out the, my career tab on the BC navigator app where you can track your career progress based on the amount of credits you've earned, stay updated on upcoming events from the Magner Center, and watch our videos for insight and advice on your career field.